today, I want to talk about the subject of the place. Bishop Tony Miller spoke on it Saturday morning. Pastor Les jumped back in on it. And they talked about this, this place. And I, I'll be honest with you, I have, I've seen these scriptures. I've read these scriptures. I've studied and preached on them. I never saw it the way they were talking about it. So I, do, I, I dove into it over this last week. And I want to share with you some of the stuff that the Lord has shown, showed me this last week. I think it's going to redefine a lot about who we are and where we're going. John 14, verse 1, 1, 2, and 3 in the New King James. It says, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. And then then this is where Tony Miller pulled the pin on the grenade and rolled it into my living room, right? He says, in my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. Remember, you read this, right? He says, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus today, we thank you, Lord, that you are revealing truth. You are uncovering and and unveiling your purposes for your people. You're drawing us into your purposes. Father, today, help me, Lord. Cause my words to be your words. Cause me to say it in a way which people can understand so we can partake of this and walk in it. And we'll give you all the praise, all the honor, and all the glory in the name of Jesus. Anybody agree with that? Amen. Amen. John 14.1, he said, or 14.2, In my Father's house are many mansions. Now we've learned for years now, he wasn't talking about 10,000 square foot houses on a golf course. Sorry to disappoint anybody, but that's not what he's talking about. What he's talking about, that word mansions is dwelling places. We've heard that. This is not new. He's saying, in my Father's house, there are many dwelling places. And he says, now I'm going to prepare a place for you. Strong inference that there's nothing been prepared yet that there's something he has to do to prepare this place for us, right? We catching this so far? Amen. Okay, just making sure you're awake out there. He says, I go to prepare a place so that where I am, there you may be also. Preparing this place was one of the most important reasons for him doing what he was going to do. Dying being buried and being raised from the dead so that he could have a place where we could be together. So far, all right? He had to do this so that this place could be made and provided for you and for I. So how important is this place in God? Is this a pretty, is this just a casual little place, a little stop alongside the road? No, the reason why he died so he could prepare this place for us. Question for you. And we're going to ask this question through the rest of this message. Is this a spiritual place? Or is this a physical place? Is it natural or supernatural? All right. You're tracking. Stay with me. Ephesians 3, chapter 3, verse 17 Then Christ will make his home in your hearts as you trust in him. Your roots will grow down deep. Now we're talking about a place, some place where your roots grow down deep. But listen to where where this place is. Your roots will grow down deep into God's love and keep you strong. Verse 18. And may you have the power to understand as all God's people should. Some of God's people? All people? All God's people. The people He made a place for. Are you tracking on this? And then, 
Liz Jones pointed this out in an exhortation on Wednesday night. God begins to describe love in dimensional terms. Width, length, height, depth. May you understand, as all God's people should understand, how, how, uh, how long, how deep, how wide, how high the love of God is. May you experience this love of God. Now, just think about it. The love is a place. It's a place that has width, has height, has depth, has length. I go to prepare a place for you. Hmm. 1 John 4, 16 we know how much God loves us, and we have put our trust in His love. God is love, and all who live in love live in God, and God lives in them. I'm submitting to you today, like Liz pointed out, that love is a place. It's a facet of this place that Jesus went to prepare for us. In Christ. Galatians 3, 28. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither slave nor free. There is neither male nor female. For you are all one... Where? In Christ. Is that a church? Is that a set of philosophies? Or is that a place that Jesus Christ... Prepared for us. And now, now, that scripture just defined and categorized all the major conflicts that are happening in our culture today. You'll neither be Jew nor Greek. There's nationalism and racism right there. There's neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither slave nor free. That's economics. Because it's not just about human trafficking or humans owning humans. The Bible says the lender, the borrower, is slave to the lender. So how many people are in debt in America today? Don't, I don't want to see that hand. He's talking about the economics of the world system. We can be free from the nationalism. Free from the racism, free from slavery and from the economics woes, if we live in Christ. Oh, let's not leave out the Me Too movement. For there is neither male nor female, but you are all one in Christ. Are you getting this? 2 Timothy 2, verse 1. Timothy, my dear son, be strong through the grace that God gives you. Come on, wake up, everybody. Be strong in the grace that God gives you in Christ. That was the message. That was the word. That was the scripture Jenny shared with us today during worship. The grace that makes us strong. And we find that... This is another description of the facet, another facet of this place that Jesus created for us. How about this one? Philippians 4, 7. Then shall you experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and your mind as you live on the college campus. As you live at work. As you live... Wherever else you want to say, that's not where that promise is going to happen. Where is that promise going to happen? Second, uh, 1 Peter 5, 14. Peace be with all, all of you who are... Are you getting this point here? How about this one? Seated in the heavenlies. Ephesians 2, 6, God raised us up together, it's you and I and Jesus, 
He raised us up. And when were we raised up together with Christ? Water baptism. In the waters of baptism, you're buried and raised to walk in newness of life. So if you are saved, if you are baptized with an understanding of the circumcision of the heart and the new resurrection into newness of life, if you are born again, then you are raised up together, not will rise up together. Oh, yes. If, if we're not alive and remain when Jesus comes back, then when he comes back, there will be the great resurrection of the dead. We will rise. But when you look at the verbiage here, we were raised up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Jesus Christ. Ephesians 3 verse 10 says it this way, interesting. God's purpose in all this was to use the church to display his wisdom and its rich variety to all the unseen rulers and authorities in heavenly places. The Message Bible says it this way. Through Christians like yourselves gathered in churches. We're not talking about in heaven, are we? Or are we? We're talking about in heaven or we're talking about on earth? You're getting it. You're getting it. Through Christians like yourselves gathered in churches, this extraordinary plan of God is becoming known and talked about even among the angels in heaven. You are seated in heavenly places. He made a place for us in the heavenlies to be seated there with him. When? Now. Yes, when we die and we're going to go to heaven, absolutely. But we don't have to wait to go to heaven to be seated in the heavenlies or to have authority in the heavenlies or to bring heaven here. I go to prepare a place for you so that where I am, there you may be also. Starting to connect these? Is the place he made for us in the spiritual realm or in the natural realm? We live in two realms simultaneously. We're not schizophrenic. We're not indecisive. We're spirit, soul, and body. Not just spirit, not just body. Spirit, soul, and body. We get to sit in heavenly places while you're sitting here in Miwok Village. We get to live in these two dimensions at the same time. We just don't know it. But that is one of the things God is beginning to do. He's beginning to do it in you through your study of the Word, in you in your time of prayer, in you in your time of worship. He's beginning to open your eyes and cause you to see that you are seated in heavenly places. That when you come and you worship the Lord God, your feet may be in Miwok Village, but man, you are in the very presence of God. You're making music with the angels in heaven. That's not a dream. That's not a theory. That's a reality bigger than the reality that you can feel today. We live in two realms simultaneously. We're seated in heavenly places while we're sitting here in church. In the same way, we have a place Jesus prepared for us in the spiritual realm and in the physical realm. Remember, I go to prepare a place for you. If I go, I'll, I'll come back and I'll, and, and I'll bring you to myself so that where I am, there you may be also. Like, like Bishop alluded to this. I mean, he, he just danced through this scripture in like 30 seconds and I'm the one that's drawn it out for half an hour. But I think we need to unpack this so we can understand it. Because I don't believe we'll ever really be able to exercise the authority that is ours in the heavenlies if we don't understand it, if we don't believe it, if we don't start fighting for it and start walking in it. We so often see this verse, I always did, in funeral terms. Right? That 
It's about going to heaven when you die. And it's, it's the only time anybody's going to be where he is, right? I don't even believe that. Why did I keep thinking that? Being with him. Seated in heavenly places. Living in Christ. Walking in that authority. Worshiping in the spirit and truth. All of these situations, all of them are a result of us walking and living in Christ. The place that he has prepared for us. We see this. We know it. You experienced it just a half an hour ago when we were standing in his presence. Anybody feel his presence today? Yeah? That is what is happening today. We don't have to wait till we go to heaven. We don't have to wait till he comes back. Right here, right now, we can walk in the place that he prepared for us. He made it so we can be with him. We don't have to die, go to heaven for that. Tony Miller says it this way. In Christ, he was giving you location on where the promises are possible. When you're in Christ, when you begin to walk in the place that he prepared for you, you're now beginning to live, to function, to walk in the location where the promises are possible. Like that verse in, in Galatians. You want to be free from racism and nationalism? Get in Christ. You want to be free from slavery? Get in Christ. You want to be free from the Me Too movement? Get in Christ. This opportunity we did not earn. We will never deserve it. It's grace and mercy. It's getting what we didn't deserve, praise God, and getting a whole bunch we never will deserve. On the cross, he paid the full price so that this place could be made and provided for you, for you, for you. So, is the place he made for us spiritual or natural? Another question for you. Are you a member of the universal body of Christ or the local body of Christ? You pass the test. Unfortunately, there are millions of Christians who not only don't pass that test, have no idea there's a test. So many millions of Christians have been hurt by the church or they're living in rebellion or any number of reasons why they don't want anything to do with church. I was amongst them. When I first got saved, someone said, you want to come to church? No, thank you. How come? Because there's people there. And people do screwy things. I wanted nothing to do with the church because people are there. You know where two or more are gathered in my name, there's gossip, there's backbiting, there's grief, there's offense. It is where he dwells. So if, if, if you're going to be where he dwells, you're going to have to take a little of that. Heard a message from Ron Carpenter a week or two ago, and he said there was a there was a, a man, a merchant of jewels, and he found a pearl of great price. And he sold all that he had and he went and bought. What did he buy? Yeah. Why didn't he just buy the pearl? He had to buy the whole field to get the pearl. Are we willing to get dirty pearls? Are we willing to sell everything we have to buy dirty pearls and get through the dirt into the pearls? That's what it means to come to the house of God. That's what it means to come and be a part of God's purposes. Because He is in the process of cleaning up the pearls. I want to be in that process. A lot of people, they are hurt by the church. They don't believe in church. I don't know where they get their doctrine. It comes from their broken heart. And they're just a part of the, lo- the, the universal body of Christ. And they don't go to church. They're not a part of church. So, 
Are you a member of the universal body of Christ or the local body? When you got saved, God placed you in the universal body of Christ. It says in 1 Corinthians that we were all baptized by one spirit into one body. That's what it means. Everybody who's saved from, from Miwok to Milpitas to Mogadishu, we, if you are saved, you are a member of the body of Christ. He puts us in the body of Christ universal. But should we be in a local church? Who determines what local church you belong to? Who determines what place in the local body you belong? Who designed the place for you to fit? 1 Corinthians 12, 18. In fact, God has placed the parts in the body, every one of them, just as he wanted them to be. As who wanted them to be? Now, I know every single one of us have wondered about his choices sometimes. There's always been, there's always been, and probably every day somebody's there going, are you sure this is where you want me to be? Are you sure that this is where you want them to be? The King James says, he did it just as he pleased. He knows best. The NLT says, our bodies have many parts, and God has put each part just where he wants it. So who determines your place in the local body? Tony Miller said this, you know, he just rattled them off, man. I had to listen to the message three times to get all this stuff. He said, my place in the body of Christ is not something I determine. It's something I discern. The, one, the maker designed it the way it is. Our job is not to redesign it. Our job is not to disassemble it and try to put it back together better then God, our job is to discern, to discover, God, where have you placed me? What is my role in your plan? My place in the body is not something I determine. It's something I discern. Oh, yes, we get to choose which body we're going to be a part of. We get to choose whether we want to be in the, in the place that God wants for me or the place I want for me, I like to think they should be the same, or just not at all. We get to choose that, and we will reap what we sow. But if we're smart, where are we going to go? Where are we going to plug in? God has made a place for you, a specific place. Nobody's forgotten. God is so big. He made every single one of you specific, individual, unique, with unique capabilities, unique input, unique perspective. He has a place for you, and he has, a, he has you for a place. Hebrews 12, excuse me, Hebrews 10, 25 says, this is one of the scriptures uh, Bishop Tony quoted. He said, not forsaking the assembling of yourselves together, as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another, and so much the more as you see the day approaching. To assemble something, every place has to fit, and every part has to have a place. Remember the way Tony Miller said it? If, if you don't have a specific place, you just have a pile of rocks. And frankly, that's what a lot of churches look like, huh? And we certainly got our part of the building that looks like a pile of rocks, because God's not done. He's not done with word of life. He's not done with his plan. And God is calling a people to find where they belong and get plugged in. Ephesians 4, verse 16. 
He makes the whole body fit together perfectly. The he is not referring to Pat. The he is not referring to Bob or to John. The he is Jesus. He, he alone makes the whole body fit together perfectly. As each part does its own unique work, it helps the other parts grow so that the whole body is healthy and growing in fullness of love. In the body of Christ, in the body in, in general, I mean the, the illustration of the body, everyone has to have a place and everyone should be in their place. How well does a body work when the pieces are not where they belong? It just kind of sounds like Star Trek with the, with, the trans, with the transporter malfunctioning and the arm is going out this way and the leg is going out that way. And, um, it doesn't work. All kidding aside, when the parts aren't where they belong, the body not only doesn't function, but sooner or later the parts will die, maybe even the body. Jesus paid dearly to provide a place for us. As his body, we need to honor the head and find our place and get in it. Another quote from Bishop Tony, he said, Don't give place for the devil by standing, excuse me, don't give place for the devil by not standing in your place, the place you were intended for. Don't give place to the devil by not standing in your place, the place you were intended for. Another quote, he said, you don't give the devil place by being offended. You give the devil place by vacating where you're supposed to be. Oh yeah, the devil's going to use offense to get you to vacate. We're all going to get offended, probably before fellowship's over. <laughs> but God gave us a provision. It's called forgiveness. We get offended, we forgive, we move on. It's not the, forgi it's not the offense it's the vacating our place that gives place to the devil. You are designed to fit the body exactly where God has placed you. And when you are where you're supposed to be, that's where you'll be the most fruitful. That's where you'll be the most satisfied. That's where you'll find the most peace. Oh yeah, there's going to be rough days when peace ain't on your, on your menu. Or, or fruitfulness seems far away. But I'm here to tell you, not just on the basis of the word, but on some serious experience. If you are where you belong, that's where you're going to find the fruitfulness, the satisfaction, and the peace. Remember, in the Greek, the word peace really means to be one, wholeness. So when you are holy one in the place you belong, you're going to walk in peace. So how do we know where our place is? Unfortunately, it's not like one of our parties where there's a name tag at each place. I believe God wants us hungry for his place. He wants us to find it. He wants us to discover it. You know, God doesn't hide things from us. He hides things for us. And I believe he wants us to discover this place. I can't just pull anybody out of the crowd and say, you know, you belong over here, you belong over there. I, that's not my job. It's not my jurisdiction. But what I can tell you is that the church is, or shall I say, is supposed to be a community, a family, a home. And I'm here to tell you, I, I bounced around for six months coming and going from Word of Life, wondering whether I wanted to be a part, whether I was supposed to be a part. And I began to see the things fall in line that told me what I needed to do. Are you being fed there, Pat? Are you being sheltered there? Do you, is there spiritually, is there a roof over your head? Or is, there, is there clothing being put placed on you? Is there protection there? Is there love there? Yeah, there's going to be cold days. Yeah, there's going to be love that's not the pat on your head, sometimes the kick in the seat of the pants, love. But are you fed there? Are you, are you sheltered there? Are you protected there? Are you loved there? Maybe that's home. 
Well, I think I'll go and see if it's that someplace else. So we take those four points and we go spend the next five years going from church to church to church to see if it compares with this thing over here. What's up with that? If you found your home, plug in. And I find that when you grow up from being an infant and in a toddler to an adolescent and an adult, when you grow up being properly fed, being properly sheltered and clothed, being properly protected, being loved, you end up in your place helping feed, provide shelter, protection, and love. How do you find the place? Is it home? Is it home? What's the Spirit saying to your, your spirit? The prophetic, is that sometimes used? Oh, man. Even Paul, one of the greatest men in the history of Christianity, had to be told by the Holy Spirit, you're going to go be a missionary. Even Paul had to be told, go to Macedonia. Timothy was the pastor of one of the largest churches in the, in, in the world at the time, in Ephesus. Paul spent two letters instructing him, teaching him, don't be afraid, don't, don't despise your youth, stir up the gift that is in you. I mean, all of that prophetically telling him where he belongs. Titus was the same thing unto the, to the island of, of Greece, of Crete. So the summary is real simple. The place Jesus made for us is still being discovered, but we see that place is one that meets the needs, spirit, soul, and body of the people he has redeemed. It is both spiritual and natural, and and both, not either or. And God has designed, God has made and provided a place for us, for you. He designed you for that place, and He designed that place for you. He determines that place, but we get to choose. So let's choose. Let's choose and let's get plugged in. Because there's a job this body has to do. God isn't just doing this as some sort of experiment in physiology. He's bringing a people to the fullness of Christ. He is raising up a people who will learn about this place that He created, the people who will walk in this place He created, who will bring the authority of heaven to earth to show the world. Let the world see, let angels talk about the place that he gave his life to provide for us. Anybody willing to join? Come on, let's all stand.